everyone, I'm Corbin from Plant Basics. I wish you all well and that your plants are happy and thriving. So today we're going to speak about a very interesting plant, so stay tuned. So this is my Alocasia Sabrina with these iconic striped petals that everyone is so in love with at the moment. Alocasia Sabrina is endemic to a single island in the Philippines where they can be found growing in damp patches close to large boulders shaded by the forest canopy. Some sources say that the plant is in danger of over collection in the wild. Alocasia Sabrina loves bright filtered light without any direct sunlight because these leaves can easily burn um, in direct sun. Make sure to rotate your plant about once a month to keep its growth even and symmetrical. I keep my plant evenly moist as it is in smaller pots. If your plant is in a bigger pot, it will obviously not require as much water. If your plant is in a clay pot, it would require more watering than if your plant is in a plastic pot because of the porous nature of clay. Another factor that will influence um, how you water your plant would be if your plant is in a higher light um, situation because that would mean that your plant will photosynthesize more and use more of the water that's available in the growing media. So watering really has many variables so it's important just to keep your eye on them and to see and to get to know your plant and to consider the environment in which you place your plant. In colder climates, these plants have been known to go into a state of semi-dormancy, whereas a lot of the older leaves would die back. Um, I would water my plant just enough so it doesn't dry out completely. Root rot is more prevalent in the winter months due to the decreased light levels and the longer nights, which results in your plants not photosynthesizing as much as in the warmer months. And that means that your plant is not taking up as much water from the growing medium. Because these plants are native to the rainforest, they do love humidity and you can increase humidity around your plant in a variety of ways. Starting with running a humidifier close to your plant, you can also spray the leaves or you can place your plant on a tray of moist pebbles. All of these will increase the humidity in the vicinity of your plant. When I repot this plant, I'm, I'm going to pot it into a mixture of Cocoa coir, orchid bark, perlite, and a wild draining potting soil. Alocasia's habrina can be left in the same pot until it becomes a like pot bond, like this plant has become in its current pot. So during the growing season from March to September, people in the Northern Hemisphere should fertilize their Alocasia's habrina with a balanced house plot fertilizer. And during the winter months, it's not something that you want to really do because it can cause a salt buildup in the pot and it can also burn the leaves because the plant will not be in active growth and actually use the fertilizer. This is not something that people in, in the southern hemisphere or in a warmer climates have to consider because even now in Cape Town, we're in the middle of winter and my plant is pushing out a new leaf. So I fertilize my plant throughout the year with the same amount of fertilizer. I wipe down my plant's leaves whenever I see it does build up. I use a damp cloth to wipe down the leaves and this also gives me time to inspect them for any pests and diseases. Um, this will prevent any dust build up on the leaves and blockage of this humata and it will also ensure healthy, happy plant growth. So now I'm going to repot my plant into this new pot, but to start with, I'm first going to um, move the carpet back. So the pot I'm going to use is a plastic pot, and it's only slightly bigger than the pot that this plant is already in, because remember that we don't want to overpot our plant. So I'm using a mixture of coca coir sphagnum moss, perlite and a well draining potting media so it's light and fluffy. So I'm first going to start off with by putting this media in the bottom of my pot and just putting my plant in just to see that the level is right and I can see that's absolutely fine. So now I'm going to take my plant out of the pot and the roots look really healthy as you can see. And I'm going to try and disturb them as little as possible to minimize the um, shock of being transplanted. 
So I'm just doing that line in the middle of the bar, on the, in the center, and look that it's at the right level. And now I'm going to gently fill in around my part with my wild draining growing media. When doing this, you want to make sure not to plant your plant too deep because that could cause your plant to rot. Also, you don't want to press down too much around the roots because that will um, cause a decreased little level of oxygen around the roots of your plant and, and that could also re lead to root rot. So I'm just gonna do the finishing touches. Um, a little bit, and I'll just gently press down around the edges just to see where I might need a little bit of the growing media. So just quickly tap this down. And I can see that my plant looks nice and secure. So there we go. So common problems and solutions with your Alocasia Sabrina. Um, scented growth and brown patches on the leaves, which is usually due to under watering and dehydration. And you can just make sure that you give your plant a little bit more moisture to kind of help to combat that problem. Brown leaf edges could be due to low humidity, so to combat this you can run a humidifier in the same room as your plant and if you don't have humidifier you can also just spray the leaves regularly. Again, uh, this is something that will, will, will obviously be, be more of a problem in the dry summer months, but it can also be a problem in the colder winter months if you have heating in your house. Wash out leaves and brown patches could, could be due to your plants um, being in direct sunlight. Alocasias love um, bright indirect light, but they don't want any direct sunlight. So if you move your plant out of direct sunlight, the new flush of leaves uh, should be perfectly f um, fine and healthy. Yellowing lower leaves could be a sign that your plant is getting too much moisture. So if you cut back a bit on the watering, it should be perfectly fine. Mold on the surface of your potting soil could have two causes, too little light and over watering. To combat this, replace the top two inches of soil and move your plant into perhaps a bit more of a brighter location, but not in direct sunlight. If your plant has um, floppy petioles and severe wilting with uh, yellowing lower leaves, uh, this could be a sign of root rot, which could be caused by too much um, moisture in the pot in combination with too little light, which will cause a decreased photosynthesis in your plant, will therefore result in your plant not taking up as much water from the growing media. To combat root rot, use a pair of sterile scissors to cut off the affected area of your plant, making sure not to disturb the healthy part of your plant too much to limit the shock of being transplanted. Plant the healthy section of plant into a smaller pot to accommodate the new root ball and fill in with a well-draining potting mix. Increased oxygen also helps to combat against root rot. You can use a solution of hydrogen peroxide mixed with water and bought your plant about every third of watering with a mixture to increase oxygen in the pot. I'll soon be doing a video specifically on this topic. In my experience, stressed plants are usually much more susceptible to pests than healthy plants. And the usual culprits are usually mealybugs, scale and spider mites. To deal with these, you can use a combination of optimal growing conditions and a suitable insecticide. I hope this video helped you to better care for your Alocasia Sabrina. If you liked this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to see more videos like these.